Forecasters are predicting a rough couple of days. This storm is on a scale that's hard to comprehend. Sandy was two storms in one. It's the worst storm in the history of New Jersey. This is unbelievable. A thousand miles. Superstorm Sandy made landfall in New Jersey on October 29th. It proved to be one of the most destructive storms to ever hit the East Coast, knocking out power to 8.5 million customers across 21 states. 65% of the state's 4 million homes and businesses lost power. Nearly all of Jersey Central Power and Light's 1.1 million customers were without power following the storm. But JCPNL had already set the stage for rapid recovery by closely tracking Sandy's progress for days and then mobilizing an initial force of 4,500 line workers, hazard responders, and other support personnel at staging sites in New Jersey well before the storm hit. When the winds finally died down, these workers leapt into action as part of the largest emergency response in the state's history, working closely with federal, state, and local safety forces to restore power as quickly and safely as possible. This historic effort required a massive deployment of people, equipment, and materials. All told, about 13,000 workers took part in our service restoration efforts as JCPNL employees were joined by line and forestry workers and support personnel from First Energy and other utilities and contractors across the country. The statistics around our response to Hurricane Sandy, as well as the nor'easter that hit New Jersey on November 7th, are staggering. 1.3 million storm-related outages. 850,000 customer calls received at our contact center. 100,000 customers restored to power per day over a five-day period from November 2nd to 6th. That's like restoring one of our larger communities every day. 65,000 trees cut and cleared to restore power. 34,000 hazard locations, primarily downed wires. That's more than the total number of customers we serve in many towns. 19,200 cross arms on utility poles damaged by the storms. 6,700 new utility poles. 3,600 new transformers. 400 new miles of wire. That's enough to go up and down the Jersey coast four times. Storms of this magnitude require a complex and comprehensive process to restore service, and it begins well in advance of the storm's arrival. For example, company meteorologists track the storm's movement and help assess the potential impact on the electric system. In addition, conference calls were held with company leadership, operations personnel, and others to plan the service restoration efforts. We also began reaching out to emergency management agencies, government officials, and regulators to implement a proactive strategy to communicate with customers and the media. Next, we arranged for internal and external mutual assistance crews. This involved conference calls with organizations such as Mid-Atlantic Mutual Assistance, the New York Mutual Assistance Group, the Southeastern Electric Exchange, and Great Lakes Mutual Assistance. Other First Energy crews, mutual assistance workers, and contractors began traveling to New Jersey well before Hurricane Sandy made landfall. And our initial force of 4,500 quickly grew to nearly 14,000 line and forestry workers hazard responders, and other key personnel who worked around the clock to restore service. We also were well prepared to house and feed these workers, having established nine staging areas. These staging sites played a critical role in helping us direct crews to the thousands of troubled areas as quickly and efficiently as possible. All of First Energy's utilities follow a storm restoration process that has been recognized by the Edison Electric Institute as one of the best in our industry. First, we isolate hazards such as downed lines, 
and make those areas safe while assessing the storm's damage. Then we make repairs to high voltage transmission equipment, lines and substations, essentially the backbone of our electric system that makes the rest of the grid work. Following Hurricane Sandy, this process involved the use of six helicopters, both to assess the damage and to help make repairs. This is where line crews work first, on the high voltage lines and substations that are away from local streets. Next, we restore power to hospitals and critical facilities. Once again, recognizing that public safety is our key priority throughout this process. We also begin repairing main feeder and distribution lines, often referred to as circuits, that carry electricity to neighborhoods and businesses. When there is significant damage to a circuit, this step usually includes a quarantine process in which we isolate an entire circuit, repair it from beginning to end, and then put it back into service. Due to the extreme force of Hurricane Sandy, 1,100 of our 1,200 circuits were damaged due to the storm, and 786 of those circuits had to be quarantined. As we begin to shift our focus to the local or neighborhood level, we concentrate on lines and equipment that can restore the largest number of customers. At the end, we repair lines and other equipment that might serve only a handful of homes, since the same amount of work might only restore one or two customers with each repair. In many areas, line workers rebuilt our system pole by pole. JCPNL serves over 230 towns, and in some towns, there were over 300 poles to replace. Their efforts were challenged by the thousands of downed trees, fallen branches, and other debris, as well as flooding from heavy rain. Many of our own employees left homes that were dark or damaged to join the effort. Also, the nor'easter brought 12 inches of heavy, wet snow to some areas. Throughout this process, JCPNL provided free water and ice to customers through distribution points at 22 locations in 13 counties. We also worked closely with the National Guard, FEMA, the Army Corps of Engineers, New Jersey State Regional Operations and Intelligence Center, emergency management professionals, shelter operators and local officials as they helped provide shelter and basic services to thousands of citizens. Although lessons are always learned and shared during these major events, we're proud of what JCPNL and the state's other utilities accomplished following Hurricane Sandy and the Nor'easter. Despite the massive destruction our crews faced, they were able to restore service to more than 700,000 customers within 110 hours of the storm passing. Also, as the Associated Press pointed out, power was restored to 95% of customers in New Jersey in 11 days, which compares favorably to similar storm restoration efforts involving hurricanes Katrina and Rita. New Jersey's barrier islands and shore areas were impacted by both high winds and floodwaters during Hurricane Sandy and the Nor'easter. The storms left 30,000 customers in those areas without the ability to receive service due to major structural damage and flooding. In some cases, homes were completely destroyed. Although a supply line that feeds the six substations on the barrier islands has been restored, much more work needs to be done to restore service and rebuild those communities. For example, two out of four supply lines remain out of service, which compromises the redundancy needed to ensure the reliable service, which in turn supports the redevelopment and future economic health of the area. And it could take months for many homeowners to make repairs needed to their residences in order to enable us to restore service to individual homes. The eventual success of this effort will require the strong cooperation and support of federal, state, and local officials, as well as other utilities and basic service providers. Open, honest, and constant communication with customers and local officials 
is key to our storm restoration efforts. For example, our online 24-7 power center enables customers to access outage maps on desktops, smartphones, and mobile devices. We also offer updates on our service restoration process through Twitter and Facebook. In addition, we provide the media with regular updates on our progress in restoring service to customers. These efforts include news releases, media advisories, press conferences, and interviews. We also ran newspaper, radio, and online advertising that provided safety tips to customers and promoted the various channels we use to provide them with up-to-date outage information. Throughout the storm restoration process, we held regular meetings with state and local officials and emergency management agencies to update them on our efforts and respond to their concerns. We were always there to answer their calls. We understand the frustration of customers who were without service. With over a million customers impacted and record numbers of customers being restored every day, some customers had to wait until the last day to receive service. We appreciate their patience and understanding as we work to restore service as quickly and safely as possible under the most challenging conditions we've ever faced. Together, we weathered the storm.